for this video, I'd like to talk about solving systems of equations with graphing. And remember that a system of equations is just two or more equations and two or more variables. And if we have the same number of equations and variables, then we can solve it. Now, if you have more equations than variables, you can solve that as well because you have extra information. But if, let's say, you just have one equation but two variables, you will not be able to solve that. You need more information. So the most typical case you'll see is when you have two variables, like x and y, and two different equations involving x and y. And there are generally three different methods to solve these, the simplest of which is the graphing method. And that's what we're going to talk about here. But you can also use methods called substitution and elimination to solve these systems as well. And we'll cover those in other videos. So this method with graphing, the truth is this is probably the least useful method. It will give you at least a visual for what's going on, which is great because that can tie the equations to your intuition, to this geometric picture you have of what's going on. But if the answer is anything other than two whole numbers or a coordinate point, like let's say one comma two, if this was a fraction and this was a fraction, then it's pretty much impossible to solve it with graphing. You can really only get a rough approximation for what the answer is. Now, if it does happen to go through some coordinate point with both whole numbers, then graphing does make sense and it will give us that visual picture of what's going on. So for this problem, we're just going to graph both of these equations and essentially just see where they intersect each other. Because when we're solving a system of equations, we're mostly just looking for where do these two lines or curves, if we talk more generally, but where do these two lines actually intersect each other? It could be at one point, it could be at no points if they're parallel, run side by side with each other, or it could be an infinite amount of points if the line was on top of the other line. So you have those three scenarios. This is the first one where they could actually intersect. And to figure out which one of those it is, we're just going to graph each of these. And we're going to use our slope intercept form. So remember slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. m is our slope of the line. And remember slope is defined as rise divided by run. So how much our line goes up and down and divided by how much it goes left and right. And we'll use this idea when graphing these. And b, the number that you add or subtract at the end, that's just your y-intercept. Since remember, if you just plug in x equals 0, this term goes away and you just get y equals b. And so that will give you, since this is where x is 0, that will give you a point on this y-axis. So let me scroll down. We'll make a little bit of room so that we can solve this and actually graph it. And we'll start with this top one. So let me use blue for that. So y equals minus 2x plus 7. And we need to identify the slope and the y-intercept. And the slope in this case, or in all cases, is just the number attached to x or whatever your independent variable is, but x in this case. So our slope here is minus 2. But if your slope is a whole number, I would recommend writing it as a fraction. So you can always divide something by 1 without changing the number. So our slope is minus 2 over 1, and we write it as a fraction because we want to compare it to our definition, this rise divided by the run. And so the negative, I with my strategy, I always put the negative with the rise. So a negative for our rise just means we go down rather than up. And our run, we're always going to go to the right. And we'll go down to right 1 once we find another point on this line. And the other point we want to use is the y-intercept. So if we plug in 0 here, this term goes away and y is equal to 7. So the point 0, 7 is on the line. And we can graph that. In fact, that's what I would recommend doing first. Graph your y-intercept. So it's 0, 7. And we'll say these are by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So 7 would be right there. Let me just rewrite that. And from here, we want to use our slope to find a second point. So you'll start at this point, and then you'll use the rise, which is negative. So we go down 2, so down to 6, then down to 5, and then to the right 1. And we'll say this is a scale of 2 as well. So down 2, so that's 6, then 5, and then right 1, put us right between 0 and 2. So that would be our second point, and we can 
connect these now with a line. So it looks something like that. And then we want to do the same thing, but for the other line. So this is 5x minus 7 equals y. So let me do that in yellow. And again, the slope is attached to x. So m in this case is 5, but I'll put it over 1 so that we can compare it to our rise over our run. And then our y-intercept is at negative 7. If you plug in 0 for x, y would just be negative 7. So 0 minus 7 is on the line. And we'll plug that in. So this is 2, 4, 6. Here is minus 7. And we'll use our slope to find another point, And then we'll just connect it with a line. So we're going to go up 5 over 1. We're at 7 now. So this gets us to 6, 5, 4, 3, and all the way to 2. So that would be up 5. And then we want to go over 1. And then we're going to continue this since we weren't able to actually greet the blue line. So we will again go up 5. So that's 2. So that brings us to 0. Then 4 gets us to 2. So we'll go all the way to 3. And then over 1 brings us to this point right here. And it does look like they are going to intersect at a whole number value. But let's actually draw the line in. So we are going here. Actually, I did not mean to draw that yellow one. So actually, let me see if I can back up here. There we go. And so we were here, and then we made it all the way up here. So I will connect those now. And once we've drawn these two lines, we can visually see that they intersect right here. And it looks to be the point 2, comma 3. Now, when you're actually working through these on the Khan Academy exercises, which are linked in the description, you will get an interactive graph to find the solution. And with an interactive graph, you can still follow this method, plot the y-intercept, and then you slope to find a second point. And once you find that second point, the line will just automatically fill in in a perfect way. Now, this drawing is by hand, so it's not perfect, which makes it a little bit difficult to estimate this point they inter intersect at. But in all of these exercises, they're going to intersect at whole number values for both the x and the y coordinates. So we can assume that this is at 2, 3. But like I said, when you actually do the exercise, it'll be very obvious where they intersect. So you won't have to do much guessing. But when you're doing this by hand, this is why the method is not ideal. There are other methods you want to use when you want to find an exact solution. And it's simply because we have to kind of guess what this point is. And let's say it was like 2.1 and 3.275. That would be pretty much impossible to guess. So if it's not whole numbers, this method doesn't really work. But we can assume this is the right answer, that these intersect at 2, 3. And later, you'll learn the substitution method, where essentially we can just set both these equations equal to each other, since they're both equal to y, and then just solve from x right there. And you will find that x equals 2. When you plug that into either equation, y will be equal to 3.